This is problem number 8 from section 2.4. In this problem they say use the relation limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta equal to 1 to determine the limit <coughs> of limit theta approaches 0 1 minus cosine theta all over sine 15 theta. All right. So for this problem, we're going to do some, some serious algebra man manipulations to get this thing to, uh, for us to be able to find a limit, essentially. <clears throat> the first thing we need to look at is, can we plug 0 in directly? If we plug 0 in directly, we get sine of 0. And we know sine of 0 is 0. And so you end up dividing by 0. So hopefully you can see that uh, that's uh, undefined, and that's why we have to do some manipulating. So our goal is to essentially manipulate 1 minus cosine into something that says sine theta over theta so that we can replace it with 1. And we also want to manipulate sine 15 theta. And we want to get it to say sine 15 theta over 15 theta so we can manipulate that as well. So here's how we're going to start. Um, I looked through a bunch of formulas for this, and the half angle formulas seem to be the formulas that would be the ones that we would want to use. And it looked to me like sine theta over 2 is the formula we would want to use, which looks like this. So I'm going to kind of do some manipulating just on this formula so you can see how we go about using it. So we have sine theta over 2 equals... Uh, plus, let's see, we've got plus and minus root 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. Now you can see what we're going for here. we got 1 minus cosine theta that's inside the radical. We want to get this so that it's isolated on one side so we can replace 1 minus cosine with a version of sine. How do we start? Well, we're going to square each side. So we're going to square this side and square this side. When you square a radical, because this says plus and minus, when you square this, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it'll just be positive. So when we square this, we end up with just 1 minus cosine theta over 2, right? because it cancels the root, equals, when we square this side, we get sine squared theta over 2. Now we can multiply by 2 to this side. So we're going to multiply by 2 on each side. And we get 2 sine squared theta over 2 equals 1 minus cosine theta. At this point now, we can replace 1 minus cosine with 2 sine squared theta over 2. So we're going to say limit as theta approaches 0, we get 2 sine squared theta over 2 all over sine 15 theta. Now at this point, we're going to really do some manipulating here. So as we go, we're going to essentially multiply the top, just the top, by theta over 2. So we're going to multiply this top by theta over 2 over theta over 2. So this is just 1, but we're going to multiply the top by this. On the bottom, we're going to multiply by 15 theta over 15 theta. Now the reason for this is you're going to see in a second, when I multiply by this, I'm going to essentially split the split the sine squared theta over 2 into two different sine squared thetas, or sorry, sine uh, theta over 2s. And then I'm going to put one of this, I'm going to put this denominator of theta over 2 underneath it. So let's do it kind of all at the same time. We have limit, well, we'll do it one at a time. As theta approaches 0, we have 2 sine theta over 2 times sine theta over 2 times theta over 2 
over theta over 2. And that's all over. On the bottom, we get sine 15 theta times 15 theta over 15 theta. All right, now I'm going to essentially take this and I'm going to put the denominator underneath one of these two. And this is going to be multiplied times the, toward the front. So this is going to equal limit as theta approaches 0. And I put this denominator underneath the first one, or the, the, the first one here. It doesn't matter where you put it. You could put it under the second one. And then I'm going to take this and put that out front being multiplied. So we end up with theta over 2 times 2 times sine theta over 2 all over theta over 2. All right, so we just split this fraction, right? This is on the bottom. This is being multiplied from the top, right? This was top times this, bottom underneath here, times sine theta over 2. That's all over. When I kind of rearrange this, this would be 15 theta, right? That's the numerator part, times sine 15 theta over 15 theta. Now you should see, look at what these look like, right? So this portion right here, that is sine theta over theta, essentially. So this part right there, and this part right here, by just doing this multiplication of uh, theta over 2 over theta over 2 and 15 theta over 15 theta, we've gotten to the point where we can use this relation uh, where sine theta over theta equals 1. We can use this relation to replace this with 1 and this with 1. So limit as theta approaches 0, we end up with theta over 2 times 2 times 1 times sine theta over 2. And then here we end up with just 15, this is just 15 theta times 1. Alright, this gets better. Now we have limit as theta approaches 0. We can start to simplify here. The 2's cancel there. The 1 obviously doesn't matter, so we end up with theta, sine theta over 2, all over just 15 theta. And you can see now we can cancel the 15s, and guess what? Our denominator with theta in it is gone. So we get sine theta over 2, all over 15. Now we can actually throw the limit in, so we can throw the zero in, and we end up with sine of zero over two, all over 15. Well, sine of zero, we know is zero, so it's zero over 15. So our limit, as theta approaches zero, of one minus cosine theta, all over sine 15 theta, well, that just equals zero. So we did a lot of algebra manipulation to get to that point, to, so where we can actually figure out the limit of that uh, expression.